Shalom, beloved, and welcome back to the Code Searcher. Spring is in the air. Yeah, it's that time again. It is spring. It's the time where animals are born, bees are making honey. It's a beautiful time of year. It's also the time of the year where we reckon the days. Okay, and it's really important to get this right, you guys. Uh, if you if we don't, we'll we'll mess up the days. Counting to Passover, okay? So I got a really exciting uh, revelation I want to show you. And it just kind of hit me today when I, when I discovered this. I was observing another channel's uh, videos based on Passover and just going over some things. You know, I'm very observant. And I noticed something very profound. And I'm going to share that with you in this video. But I want to start off uh, from a... A little clip from El Shaddai Ministries. Mark Biltz. Mark is one of my friends. I've met him a few times at conferences. And uh, though he's not on the same calendar as me, he is right a lot about a lot of things. So let me, let me share that with you. And then we're going to look at something really compelling. A lot of times people, and we're going to look at something in Enoch as well. So, uh, you know, that's been brought up a lot in the past few years. The Zadok calendar, what's written in Enoch. Uh, we're going to examine some of that today because there are many who like to discount the moon and say it's from Babylon and that we're not supposed to observe the moon. And I'm here to tell you we are. The Bible is very clear about this. And if there's any teacher that tells you otherwise, they're wrong. And I'm going to prove that to you in this video today. So let's take a look at Mark Biltz and what he has to say. And then I'm going to show you something really profound that you need to know. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I am so excited. Here we are. The new moon of the month of Nisan. One of the things I want to mention, uh, if you look at our slide, you see the gears of like uh, the inside of a grandfather clock. Well, I want you to know God has a time clock himself. He has a schedule that he is keeping. And when you think of these gears within a time clock, when it comes to God's calendar, God's time clock, the gears revolve around the weekly Shabbat, the monthly new moons, and the annual festivals. These are known as Moedim, or God's appointed times. Then on a larger scale, besides the Moedim gears, you have the Shemitah cycle. Every seventh year is a Shemitah cycle, closing out a seven-year cycle. And then after seven sevens, 49 years, comes the Jubilee year. This is why it is so important to be on God's calendar. This is so significant, and especially tonight, and I'll tell you why. Because tonight begins the month of Nisan 1, where Nisan 1 was the very day that Moses' tabernacle was inaugurated. It was the grand opening ceremony. Believe it or not, it's tonight we are entering and celebrating the anniversary of God's glory, God's presence coming down from heaven on earth. It happened historically on this very day. And we want to welcome God's glory, the anniversary of this great event with the inauguration ceremony of the tabernacle of Moses. We find as we celebrate the month of Nisan, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God is the one speaking here, guys. And he said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days 
in four years. And this had nothing to do with winter, spring, summer, fall. That Hebrew word for seasons is moadim. It means God created the sun and the moon not only for signs which come through eclipses, but also for the appointed times. When it says days and years, it's talking about Shemitah years, Jubilee years. It's talking about the holy days. Well, the new moon, the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal date in the biblical calendar. Because if you don't know when the first is or the new moon is, how would you know when any of the biblical holidays fall during? He brings up a really good point, you guys. If we don't know, how 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 do we track it? Well, some will say uh, it's a continuous cycle. Well, you guys, I'm going to prove to you in just a few minutes that is not true. Because you end up with 10 extra days, just like it says in Jubilees. Okay? During that month. This particular month is the very month. And it's tonight. Think about this. This very night, as you look at the new moon, that was the very same moon that God spoke to Moses in Egypt in Exodus. He says, look at this new moon. This new moon is to be the beginning of a new year for you. And tonight is that very same new moon on the very same day, some 3,500 years ago. We know in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible begins and it ends with the tree of life. It says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, guess what? In Revelation chapter 22, at the end of the book, we also find that same tree of life we saw at the beginning. Listen to the word of the Lord. He showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of the street on one side of the river, and on that was the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit every month. And when it says it yields its fruit every month, he won't be using January or February, all right? It means the biblical months is what he's talking about based on the new moon. Well, what about during the millennial reign? My goodness, can you imagine? Here we have the thousand year reign of Messiah. Are we gonna be keeping the new moon at that time? Well, listen to Ezekiel chapter 46 and verse one. It says, thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut six working days, but on the Sabbath, it will be open, and on the day of the new moon, it will be open. Imagine that during the thousand-year reigns, we're going to keep the actual Sabbath, and we're going to keep every month the new moon. Well, what about after the millennial reign? What happens when eternity begins? There's a new heaven and a new earth. Well, guess what? In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23, it says, God is speaking, as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so your seed and your name shall remain. He's speaking to the Jewish people here. And he says it will happen from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. Do you realize even after the, the, the old, this old earth is gone, we have a new heaven, a new earth, millennial reign is over for eternity, eternity. We will be keeping the Sabbath and the new moon. Wow. We find in Psalms 104, verse 19 through 21, that God, he says, it says, made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows his going down. You make darkness, and it is night, 
And then it says, this is when all the beasts of the forest creep forth and the young lions roar after their prey and they seek their meat from God. This is telling us that God specifically made the moon to mark these appointed times. Now listen to Psalm 81 verse 3 and 4. It says, blow the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon for our feast day. That is speaking of Passover, uh, Sukkot, or tabernacles. And it says, this is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. God wants the shofar blown at the new moon. Now, I've got a little ram's horn here, and I'm going to attempt to blow it for us all. And let's sanctify this month. Let's set this month apart as all of us gather together and stand as one big happy family. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it. All right. I want you to know this new moon really is all about God's covenant with David and the Jewish people. Listen to this. This is Psalms 89, which really is a psalm for the new moon. Listen, it says in verse 20, I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also will strengthen him. And then God says in verse 23 and 24, God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him, smite them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him and through my name shall his horn be exalted. And then we find in verse 28 and 29, God says, forever will I keep my mercy for him and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed will I make to endure forever and his thrones as the day of heaven. Now listen to verse 33 through 37. God says, nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will never utterly take from him, nor will I allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break. I will not alter the word that's gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. His throne as the sun before me, it will be established forever like the moon even like the faithful witness in the sky. Do you understand? The faithful witness in the sky established forever. You got you hear what he said is forever. And I get really tired of hearing some teachers online saying that the observation of the moon comes from Babylon. It certainly does not. And you sound foolish when you, when you spew this and then we have all these scriptures. Okay. It's eternal. It's forever. And I really believe um, that we're going to observe the moon in the kingdom. So all these people that come against a moon observation, they call it moon worship. But let me tell you, folks, when I walk into the kitchen and I look up at the clock to see what time it is, I'm not worshiping the clock. I'm observing time. That's how it is. Okay. So it is uh, proper for us to do that. And we're going to continue. I'm going to show you some things from Enoch. Since Enoch is is quite often thrown out there as a as you know where all this information comes from about how to keep the Zadok calendar. And by the way, Zadok was David's high priest. And don't you know if David was keeping new moon, so was Zadok. Hallelujah. So uh we're gonna look at that a little further in um Enoch in just a moment, because it's very important, you guys. This is how we reckon time. And how we reckon the days and the months and the years. There were two dials found in Qumran. One tracks the sun, one tracks the moon. They're both used together in conjunction, in unison, my friend. Just like the big hand and little hand on the clock, 
You don't just use the big hand and just throw away the little hand. It doesn't make any sense. You use the whole clock, correct? Let's continue with this before I, I get into my part of the teaching. The sun and the moon are God's faithful witnesses in the sky that he will never break his covenant with the Jewish people. That is powerful to think about. Now in Exodus 12, verse 2, it says, This month will be the beginning of your months. It'll be the first month of the year for you. Well, guess what? That is tonight is the beginning of the biblical calendar when all the Moedim or the feast days are determined. And in Israel, they would light fires on the mountains. It would go from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop. So even all the way from Israel to Babylon and Lebanon and Syria, all the foreign countries so that all the Jews that are spread about would know as quickly as possible when the new moon began. And I want to just point this out because it just occurred to me when people say, well, what if we can't see the moon? You know, in ancient times, everybody, it wasn't the job of everyone in the village. It was two, two witnesses would come and then they would report to everyone else. So they would handle that, right? So the congregation would go to those who knew what they were talking about and observe, observing to get the correct time. Um, and this is what happened. They signaled all the way into where they were in exile from jerusalem all the way to babylon you guys and all the way to syria that's incredible incredible that's that's like the uh, internet today except it moved really slowly and the signal was fire so um yeah we have a we have a much bigger advantage than those in those days you guys because we have technology so i don't listen you shouldn't be throwing up arguments what do we do if this you can't see it use technology that's the, that's the simple answer. Check and see if anybody else in the world is it. For instance, last night, there were too many clouds in the sky uh, where we are, and we couldn't see it. But don't you know, I could, I jumped on the internet and, and saw that, oh, wow, it was seen in Gibraltar and in many other places uh, before it got to my time zone time. So I know that it was there. Okay, so um, you know Daniel writes about this, the time when knowledge is increased. OK, so use the technology. Don't you know, you know you're asking, um, you know, the wrong questions when you say, well, what were they doing in, in ancient times? They couldn't see the clouds. Well, it wasn't everyone's responsibility, first of all. And the other is the two witnesses. They would go up on a high place. OK, usually above the, the you know, obstructions, things like that. And then they would report to the people. OK, so there wasn't all this confusion in the congregation where people say, I didn't see it. Well, I saw it. I didn't see it. No, it wasn't there. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. You see what I'm saying? We see that today uh, with a lot of people arguing about how to reckon this. And some say, you don't even look at the moon. Oh, really? I'm going to prove you wrong here in just a minute. So let's stand. And let's. Matter of fact, let's, let's go ahead and get into that. Let's go ahead and get into that. Before um, I show you something really cool, I want to go to a website that you can use. As Speaking of technology, you can use uh, renewedmoon.com as a source from uh, the Internet. But you can just, you know, if you can't see it, it also is giving you the barley report. And by the way, the grain that you see behind me, that's not wheat. That is barley. Um, <laughs> wheat has just been planted. It hasn't even come up yet. It's, if it is, it's, it's really tiny. Okay. So um, it's barley that they're waving. Okay. When they're waving sheets at, at uh, when you got to wave the sheets um, at the Passover time, it's barley. So keep that in mind. So right now we're at a waxing crescent. Okay. You can scroll down and see where where the viewing was and other places of other places of the world. It was seen in Oman. Uh, it was seen in Saudi Arabia, which means it was seen in Israel uh, or it was apparent in Israel. All right. So that's a that's a uh, resource you can use. 
And now I want to take you to chapter 73 of Enoch so I can show you something about this. Quite often you'll hear from the Zadok calendar people about the Qumran scrolls and what's been found there, yet you don't see any evidence. You don't see any um, teaching from the archaeologists, any reports from the archaeologists. What you get is conjecture and speculation and narration is what you get. Now, what I find really interesting about this, because they say that uh, Enoch in the book of Jubilees proves the Zadok calendar. Well, what I find from the book of Enoch is that he writes extensively about the sun, moon, and stars and their purpose. Let's just take a look at that right now. In chapter 73 of Enoch, you can see where he says, and then I saw another progress of regulation, which he, regulation, right? What a pro, progress of regulation. We're looking at a clock. He affected in the, okay, the progress and regulation, which he affected in the law of the moon. How many know laws are forever, especially physical, that, that who establishes, right? The progress of the moons and everything related to them, Uriel showed me, the holy angel who, can, who conducted them all. Their stations I wrote down as he showed to me, and I wrote down the months as they occur and the appearance of their light until completed in 15 days. And what is going, what's being said right here is the lunation of the moon is broken up and for each, uh, it's broken up into sections. You got quarters, but then you've got the, the lunations, which is in 15 days. So the, this crescent that we saw was about one fifteenth of the moon. Okay, so we start from darkness, which is fully concealed. This is the word cassette in Psalms. And I, I submit to you humbly that I really believe that it was mistranslated by King James or something was, was left out about it because it is fully concealed. So we got a fully concealed moon and the appearance of light is one fifteenth until it's completed in 15 days. And then you have the full moon. In each of its two seven portions, it is it completes all of its light at rising and setting. Okay. On stated month, it changes its settings. And on stated months, it changes, it, it makes its progress through each gate. In two gates, the moon sets with the sun. And in those two gates, which are in the midst, in the third and fourth gate, and from the third gate goes through the fourth gate, seven days until it makes its certain circuit. So what it's saying here is at new moon time, as it changes and makes its progress through the gate, in two gates, the moon sets with the sun. This is when you see the crescent of the moon, you guys. And how we know this is the head of the month, not full moon time, no moon, and then you see one fifteenth, and then the next night is two fifteenths, three fifteenths, all the way up to to a full moon. Okay, so you see this in the setting of the sun, meaning when the sun goes down, you immediately see it there in the west, and it'll be there briefly until it goes below the horizon. That is new moon time. It's the time we're in right now, you guys. It is exactly the same way that Moses did it that Yeshua did it, the disciples did it, all the way up until the time when the calendar was changed 325 years after Yeshua in the time of Constantine. Okay? On stated months, it changes in its settings. On stated months, it makes its progress through each gate. In two gates, the moon sets with the sun. And in those two gates, which are in the midst, in the third and fourth gate, and the third gate, it goes forth for seven days and makes its circuit. This is around the earth. It, it Again, it returns at the gate whence the sun goes forth. And in that completes the whole of its light. Then it declines from the sun and enters in an eight day into six gate and returns in seven days to the third gate and from, from which the sun goes forth. So it just gave you the lunation of the moon in its cycle. It goes from nothing one fifteenth all the way up into its fullness, 
and then it wanes back down to nothing. These are returning in, in, in that time. Every night it's in a different place in the sky, you guys. At, 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 you watch it. Watch the same place every night at the same time and, and see if the moon is not a little bit higher in the sky. I'm telling you the truth. When the sun proceeds to the fourth gate, the moon goes forth for seven days until it passes the fifth gate. Again, it returns in seven days to the fourth gate and completing all its light declines and passes out, uh, passes on by the first gate in eight days and returns in seven days to the fourth gate from which the sun goes forth. Thus I beheld their stations according to the fixed order of the month, the sun rises and sets. At those times, there is excess of 30 days belonging to the sun in five years and in belonging to each year, five years. When it's completed, around 364 days. And to the sun and the stars belonging six days, six days in each and five years, thus 30 days belong to them. And this was how um, the solar system was in Enoch's time, you guys. But as we know now, that is not the case. <laughs> uh, it, it is just not the case. Some say that Yahuwah dented his clock. Um, that's to be debated. But it's definitely, it's it's off. Uh, for sure. But uh, what happened with Planet X when it perturbated the universe? I believe this is where Yahuwah dented his clock, you, you guys. But I also believe that when it equalized, uh, the clock still kept time and was is accurate. Okay? So that the moon has 30 days less than the sun and stars. The moon brings on all the years exactly. I want you to keep that in mind. The moon brings on all the years exactly. So from Passover to Passover should be exactly 364 five days. Agreed? Keep that in mind. I want you to mark that down somewhere because I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind in just a minute. And uh, their stations may come neither to forwards or to backwards a single day, but the years may be changed with the correct precision in the 364 days. Okay. So you don't want your time. Your Passover should not be going back in time or forward in time from year to year. It should be the same day every year on you who is calendar. Nissan 15 should be a full moon every year, period. Enoch tells you that, okay? So let's move on from here because I want to get into the, well, what I want to show you. So we agree that from year to year, you should have, from Passover to Passover, you should have, 364, 365, right? Right? Yes. Everybody say yes. Okay. So let's talk about, before I show you this, let's talk about that part, that fraction of uh, verse from Jubilees that the Zadok loved to show and throw into your face for you keeping the lunar solar saying that if you do this, you're going to have 10 extra days every year. You guys, that is not, and I've taught you this, that is not what Jubilees is saying. It's taking out of context, and I'm going to prove to you right now what it means. So on the solar lunar calendar, from year to year, every year it's going to be Nissan 15 full moon, year to year. Now, if you don't observe the moon or the, the, the new moon, which it could be a one-day or two-day new moon, Guess what happens? If you observe Hillel's calendar or the Saturday calendar and you don't observe the moon at all, you will end up with 10 days every year. It's not the solar lunar people that do. Their days are on spot every year. Here's what I want to show you. So I went and did an audit of Remnant House because they're on the Zeta calendar. And I want you to see something, because I go back three years on Passover. So from Passover to Passover to Passover, we should have 365 days, 364, right? 
So in this video, you can see here, it was March 21st, 2020. Then in the next year, the next year is March 31st, 2021. All right, so let's look at that again. This year is March 21st, 2020. The next year is March 31st, 10 extra days, right? That's 375 days, you guys. So from Passover, March 31st, 2021 to Passover, 2022, and if you don't believe me, do this. Hey, Siri, how many days is it from March 31st, 2021 to April 6th, 2022? 371 days. 10 extra days. So you guys, I've been telling you this for, for years. I told this to Peter Michael Martinez. One in, out the other. I explained to him how the moon is forever and it tracks these days and keeps them precise. It, just like Jubilee says, if you don't observe the moon correctly, you'll end up with 10 extra days you got that's that's real. And I just showed you from three consecutive years of this man keeping Passover on different days each year with a 10 day extra for each year. It's because he's doing it wrong. And if you're keeping Sabbath with this guy every Saturday and keeping the, sh the uh, Shabbat and keeping the feast with this guy, not observing the, the moon at all, you're in error. And that's a fact. So, you guys, we're going to continue the conversation. And I would love to talk to this guy, but, but he seems to believe that he can just declare. <laughs> well, even if you declare, guess what? You can declare error. And I submit that that's what's going on here. So be very careful, you guys, with listen to some of these teachers that tell you that moon observation is from Babylon. Um, let me just tell you how it got to Babylon in the first place. You ever heard of a prophet named Daniel? <clears throat> Daniel was the one that brought this information to Babylon. And you can just look at the book of Daniel and see that. Immediately when Daniel gets there and his presence known is, it's known that he is the anointed one that has the revelation. Who did the king go to? The king made him head over all of the astrologers. All of That doesn't mean Daniel was learning the astrology he was teaching it he was teaching them this is how the magi 700 years later is it 700 years later i believe so found yeshua because of what was written about the stars the prophecies about it so we're going to continue our study in uh, the calendar of the Bible, you guys. And I have put together some playlists for you on my channel to kind of help you out. Also, be looking for the playlist on, uh, you know, and I just shared this again the other day, the codes that I've found. Uh, it's like seven of them now that I believe is conclusive. The, the, the Bible code confirms the Bible. The Bible confirms itself, has, you know, if it had confirmed to me that there was a Zadok calendar, you know what I've done? I'd have gone into whatever this Zadok calendar is. You know why? Because the codes were confirming that for me. This is how I moved from pre-trib rapture to there is no pre-trib rapture because of what the Bible revealed to me. The Holy Spirit showed me and showed me through the codes. And that's why I had the position that I do today. And that's why I'm so very fervent and strong feeling about this 
It is conclusive, you guys. We have to observe the moon. And I'm going to show you something else in another teaching that's going to blow your mind about the wheat. And impossible. It's all about the mathematics. Numbers don't add up right in, in the observation with the Pentecost, okay? But we'll get in that in another video. I just want to leave you with that to think about you guys. Go check it out. Go check the information. Verify it for yourself. Come back and let's talk about it. You know, uh, let's be brothers and sisters and unite on this thing. I find it really fascinating that, you know, and I said it had to be only a miracle that was going to bring all these Hebrew uh, groups together. And what does Yahuwah do this year with Remnant House is going to somehow end up on the right calendar with the rest of us. Uh, and, and it may be a few days off. I don't know exactly what day they're doing it. But last year they kept it April 6th. This year is when it, it, it is. Last year it was not April 6th, you guys. Yeah, it was it was a difference on the Gregorian. It was the same day on Yahuwah's calendar, but it was not April 6th. If you go look at the, what the moon cycle is for that day and then look at what's the, what April 6th is this year, okay, it's a full moon. It wasn't last year for that, okay? So um, was it a fluke? I don't know. But I find it really fascinating that Yahuwah still somehow managed to get us all on the same calendar anyway, in spite of the ignorance and the arrogance and the ego. So with that, I say shalom to you. May Yahuwah bless you and make his face to shine upon you and bless you in this season. You guys, this is an exciting time. This is when Yeshua gave his life and rose from the dead for us. Okay. And it's all preserved in this story. Passover. Okay. It's exciting, and it's, a, and it's an amazing teaching if you ever go to your a Passover Seder on what it really is, you guys. The Seder part of it. And here's another thing. If you go to a Seder, and they are doing the Eucharist, in other words, the Catholic ritual with little wafers, run, get out of there. That is a Catholic ritual. Yeshua was not establishing the Eucharist at the Last Supper. He was teaching his disciples what the Passover was about him. Okay. And he said, when you do this, meaning every year at Passover, when you do this, remember me. Why? Because this is about me. Okay. So if they're doing that, just get up and leave. They have no idea what they're doing. They're mixing in traditions of man in the, in the Catholic church into a, a Hebrew Seder. And it's, <laughs> it should not be done. All right, so shalom, have a good day.